Heading into 2024, there are plenty of concerns out there. Economic concerns, geopolitical concerns, wars, and the list goes on. It's very important to stay up with what's going on in the market as well as the economy as a whole. I touched on my 2024 strategy in a recent video, which I'll pin right here for you to watch at the conclusion of this video. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 stocks I expect to outperform in 2024. It's going to be a mix of growth stocks, dividend stocks, as well as ETFs. All of these positions I either own or are high on my watch list. So before we begin, do me a huge favor. Click that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel so you're notified anytime we drop new content. And let's jump into it. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA, but not a financial advisor, so please perform your own due diligence. And before we jump into today's video, let me thank today's video sponsor, which is Cashflow University, or CFU. For those of you unfamiliar, Cashflow University is the premier online options trading community. If you're new to options, or you've been trading options for a number of years, then Cashflow University is a community for you. We are talking about a community that has doubled in size over the past year, largely due to their strong results and education that they provide. I'm a member of this community and love it. Cashflow University has a number of teachers that are in there to educate and answer all the questions that you might have. In addition, they post their very trades for folks to follow and learn from. Many of the strategies utilized within CFU are focused on generating income, which means selling covered calls, selling cash secured puts, credit spreads, and much more. Right now, viewers of my channel, Cashflow University is offering 25% off the first month's membership. So you can go in and check it out by using promo code CFU25. Check out the link down in the description below. All right, let's jump back into today's video, taking a look at 10 stocks that I expect to outperform in 2024. And these are in no particular order. But we're going to begin with number one, which happens to be my largest individual stock holding in my portfolio, which is Alphabet. Stock ticker G-O-O-G-L. So again, being that it's my largest individual position, if it does have a great year in 2024, I'm going to be a happy camper. Alphabet is a member of the so-called Magnificent Seven, which largely carried the stock market in 2023. Alphabet themselves had a tremendous year in 2023 as they were up 55% and they currently have a market cap of $1.75 trillion, making it one of the largest companies in the S&P 500 and in the US today. So you have this company that is massive in size. They're coming off a tremendous year, up 55%. So where is the upside, you might ask? And I'm so glad you did ask that. Well, first off, for those of you that are unaware, Alphabet owns not one, but the two largest search engines in the world today, one being Google search and the other being YouTube, where you're watching this video right now. Both of these areas are expected to grow in 2024 as the digital advertising bounces off its lows in 2023, especially if you add in the election that's due at the end of 2024, which can bring in even more ad dollars. That there is just talking about search. Alphabet also has irons in the fire when it comes to cloud being one of the largest cloud providers out there, as well as artificial intelligence. You definitely don't want to count Alphabet out when it comes to artificial intelligence. In terms of valuation, analysts are looking for Alphabet to generate adjusted EPS of $6.68 per share in 2024, which equates to a forward price-to-earnings multiple of 20.4 times, which seems rather cheap for a mega-cap stock like Alphabet. Over the past five years, for comparable purposes, shares have traded at an average multiple of 25.6 times. The company continues to generate huge amounts of free cash flow, hovering around $70 billion over the trailing 12 months. Analysts have an average 12-month price target of about $155 per share, implying nearly 15% upside from current levels. I just recently published a deep dive on Alphabet for premium subscribers to The Investor's Edge, my weekly newsletter where you get a deep dive every single week on an individual stock. You get our Edge report recapping and going in-depth on what's going on in the stock market as well as the economy. You also get a brand new look every single month where I publish monthly portfolio updates of my entire portfolio definitely check out the link down in the description below. Stock number two on our list is NVIDIA Corporation, stock ticker NVDA. Now, if you thought Alphabet's performance of 55% was good, 
wait till you see NVIDIA. This company had a year for the ages. They have the strongest, most powerful chips that are out there, and a lot of them related to artificial intelligence. They have such high demand that the company can't even keep up with it. A good problem to have, if you ask me. In 2023, shares of NVIDIA climbed more than 225%, and the company now has seen their market cap cross $1 trillion mark, sitting just shy of $1.2 trillion at the time of this video. As I mentioned, the demand is strong, but so is the company's pricing power. There are numerous competitors out there, but NVIDIA has reigned supreme. So why in the world are we talking about a stock that just moved 225%? Well, number one, strong demand. Number two, great products. Number three, valuation, believe it or not, is still actually intriguing. Analysts are looking for 2024 EPS of $20.44 per share, which would equate to 66% growth over 2023. That gives shares of NVIDIA a forward PE multiple of just 23.3 times. That is an extremely low multiple for 66% growth. That gives the company a peg ratio of just 0.4, and usually anything below one marks a stock that is undervalued. Analysts also remain high on the stock with an average 12-month price target of $660 per share, implying another 40% upside from current levels. Stock number three in our list is Amazon, stock ticker AMZN. Okay, now, Mark, you've shown me three stocks on the Magnificent Seven. Are we going to go through all of them? No, I promise this is going to be the last stock of the Magnificent Seven. And the reason I like it is pretty much the same reasons I like both NVIDIA and Alphabet. They've had tremendous years in 2023, but they still have a lot of growth packed in, and the valuation still looks intriguing moving forward. Amazon shares have climbed 70% in the last 12 months and currently trade at a market cap of $1.5 trillion. So what is there to like about Amazon, you might ask? Amazon is a company that has been investing heavily into its various business segments over the past few years, and those results are starting to show up. Hence, the improved margins we're starting to see. Operating margins through the first three quarters of the year were 5.8% compared to 2.6% in the same period in 2022, so more than doubling from the prior year. Over the past 12 months, free cash flow has grown from negative $26.3 billion in 2022 to a positive $16.9 billion here in 2023. Amazon is a clear leader when it comes to cloud, as I mentioned, owning roughly a third of the market share with AWS. Analysts are calling for 2024 EPS of $3.62 per share, which equates to a forward PE multiple of just shy of 40 times, about half of what their five-year average has been. With EPS expected to grow 35% this year, that gives Amazon a peg ratio of 1.1, which indicates some good value. Even though you're paying a high multiple, you're still getting some solid growth. Analysts also rate the stock a strong buy with a 12-month average price target of $183 per share, implying nearly 27% upside from current levels. Now let's move on to stock number four, which is Visa, stock ticker V. Now we're going to move away from those growth stories and move back to dividend stocks, something we cover a lot on this channel. Although Visa isn't a huge dividend payer, they have very strong dividend growth. And one of the sectors that I am high on moving into 2024 is the financials sector. So this is going to be the first and pretty much only financial company we're going to cover in these top 10 stocks today. But there's many others that I like moving into 2024, some of which I own like Bank of America and Schwab as well. Visa shares have climbed over 20% in the past 12 months and traded a market cap of $518 billion, larger than close competitors MasterCard and American Express almost as large as both of those companies combined. As you are likely already aware, Visa is a payments company, acting really as the middleman between consumers and businesses, taking a small piece of every transaction that's out there. Credit card usage is up across the board. We've seen that based on the data Visa has provided, but even outside of Visa, we have seen that more folks are moving away from actual hard cash and moving to credit cards, and then we've also seen it from credit card debt looking at record levels of credit card debt just here in the U.S. alone. However, a piece of personal finance advice, anytime you use a credit card, make sure it's something that you can pay off because there's extremely high interest rates, usually upwards of 20% or higher on credit cards. To put all of this into perspective, over 180 million Americans have at least one credit card account. When it comes to Visa, the business, they operate in a very high margin business. One area that I particularly like to look at 
is free cash flow margin. This tells me that whatever dollar that you generate in revenue, how much of that is turned into free cash flow. And when you're looking at Visa, we look at a free cash flow margin of 75%, extremely high. Every dollar of revenue that Visa generates, 75% or 75 cents is turned into free cash flow. Free cash flow can be used to pay dividends, pay down additional debt, make strategic acquisitions, or even reinvest more back into the business. When it comes to investing in dividend stocks in particular, I prefer to invest in dividend growth stocks. These aren't usually the companies with the highest yields. Instead, I'm focused more on the dividend growth, a company that can show me that they not only can pay their dividend every year, but continuously increase it at a high rate of speed of 10% or more is a company that I want to invest in because it still gives you a level of growth as well. Visa currently pays the dividend that yields below 1%, but it has a five-year dividend growth rate of 16%, which is quite strong. The company has increased their dividend for 15 consecutive years and counting. Analysts are calling for 2024 EPS of $9.91 per share, which equates to a forward price-to-earnings multiple of 26.2 times, well below their five-year historical average of 32 times. Analysts also have an average 12-month price target of $285, implying 10% upside from current levels. Stock number five on our list is L3 Harris Technologies, stock ticker LHX. Okay, going through the first four stocks that we've already covered, we have touched on a communication services company, we have touched on a technology company, we've touched on a consumer discretionary company, and then we just touched on a financial company. Now let's move on to the industrial sector with L3 Harris, which is also a defense contractor. The company is an aerospace and defense technology company providing mission-critical solutions to both government and commercial customers worldwide. LHX ended the year relatively flat, and it has a market cap of nearly $40 billion. At one point during the year, the stock fell to $160, but now trades above $200 per share meaning the stock has moved more than 25% higher since the beginning of October of 2023. When it comes to L3 Harris, they produce a lot of surveillance and the technology side of defense contractors. And with all of the geopolitical and the tensions going on around the world, many countries are on high alert, making sure their militaries are prepared for anything. And that means having the most up-to-date softwares and up-to-date equipment in when it comes to defense spending. At the end of Q3, L3 Harris was working through a $32 billion backlog, which gives investors some insight as to what is to come down the road. A company cannot book revenues until they deliver the product. L3 Harris is also a dividend growth stock, much like Visa, but they have a much higher yield than we saw with Visa. L3 Harris currently yields a dividend of 2.2% to go along with a five-year dividend growth rate of 13%. Management has increased the dividend for 22 consecutive years, having them near a dividend aristocrat status. Looking ahead to 2024, analysts are calling for EPS of $13.05 per share, which equates to a forward price-to-earnings multiple of 15.9 times, which is well below the company's five-year historical average of 18.3 times and below their 10-year average of 17.3 times. Analysts have an average 12-month price target of $232 per share, implying nearly 12% upside from current levels. Stock number six on our list is Next Era Energy, stock ticker NEE. Now we're going to visit yet another sector, the utility sector, which was actually the worst performing sector in 2023. If you want to look for value stocks, head over to the utility sector. Utility companies tend to have higher yields and less growth potential. And in 2023, if you think about it, while we were going through this high rate environment, there were many comparable offerings out there like high yield savings accounts. Why invest and get that individual stock exposure risk when you can go to a high yield savings account that's going to pretty much give you the same exact returns. Now, if rates are expected to come down like the Federal Reserve is saying in 2024 and something like NEE who continues to increase their dividend each and every year, well, that yield is where it's at that's only going to continue to rise moving forward where the high yield savings accounts are going to start coming down. Now, as I just mentioned, utilities got hammered over the course of the past 12 months. So don't be surprised when you look at this chart and see shares of NEE that were down 25%. The end of October though, you can see some investors are starting to come back into the stock. Next Era currently has a market cap of $127 billion. 
For those of you unfamiliar with NE, the company is comprised of two segments. It's regulated utility Florida Power and Light Business, or FPL, and then the Next Era Energy Resources, or NER. The FPL segment is reported as the largest electric utility in the country. NEE is a way to gain exposure to a beaten down sector, as well as the play on the move to more renewable resources moving forward. Next Era is a member of the dividend aristocrat list, meaning that they have increased their dividend for at least 25 consecutive years, 28 consecutive years and counting to be exact for Next Era. The company has the highest dividend yield on our list today, sitting at 3%, with a five year dividend growth rate of 11%. Analysts are looking for 9% EPS growth in 2024 to $3.40 per share, which would calculate to a forward PE multiple of 18.1 times, well below the company's 10-year historical average of 25 times. In addition to that 3% dividend yield you receive as an investor, analysts also believe the stock will rise 10% from current levels as they have an average 12-month price target of nearly $68 per share. So if you're value hunting, definitely take a look at Next Era Energy. Stock number seven on our list is Boeing Company, stock ticker BA. So now we're gonna venture back to the industrial sector. And Boeing has been a stock that I've liked and been in and out of over the past decade alone. The company had a very rough 2020. Not only did they suspend their dividend, but they also dealt with a number of 737 MAX crashes, which ended up in the entire airline, that aircraft being grounded for quite some time which led to the stock being in free fall. But let's first take a look at the more recent results. Looking at this chart, we can see that the stock had a strong close to 2023, ending the year positive by more than 20%. Boeing currently has a market cap of $147 billion. However, if we zoom out and look at the five-year chart, we can see the stock is actually still down 20% over that period. In March 2020, the stock price of Boeing fell to $90 per share. And if you go back 12 months before that, we're talking about a stock price that was well over $400. No, you did not hear me incorrectly, $400. They went from $400 down to $90 per share, an incredible fall from grace. However, with the 737 MAX flying again and Boeing building back the trust of both everyday flyers and airliners alike, they're starting to see themselves winning contracts again from the likes of their closest competitor in Airbus. This is really a duopoly when it comes to airliners. You got Boeing and you got Airbus. Boeing has not yet reinstated that dividend that they cut in early part of 2020, but they have goals of generating upwards of $10 billion in free cash flow by the year 2025. And based on how they're progressing, I believe they will meet those goals by at least FY25 or FY26. And it wouldn't surprise me at all as if they reinstated the dividend around that exact time. As you can see from this fast graphs charts, Boeing is packing some serious growth each of the next two years. Analysts are looking for adjusted EPS of $4.51 per share in 2024, which equates to a forward PE multiple of 54.3 times, which seems quite high for a company that historically trades closer to 20 times. However, Boeing has gone through a lot of changes, as we've discussed, and growth is returning and profits are returning. So that throws a lot of these stats out the window. Analysts rate the stock a strong buy with an average 12-month price target of $277 per share, implying 13% upside from current levels. Okay, we've gone through the first seven stocks on our list, and I've tried to give you a bit of everything. Are you more of the mega cap looking for some growth? Well, those are those first three. Are you an investor looking more for dividend stocks or dividend growth stocks? We've covered some of that. Are you an investor looking more for a higher yield or more value play? We've covered a utility company. These final three stocks and ETFs that we're going to look at on this list are going to be much more higher risk, higher reward. Just want to put that disclaimer out there before we jump in. That leads us to stock number eight, which is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, stock ticker IWM. For any of you that cover that, you know that this actually isn't a stock. This is an ETF, an ETF that holds small cap stocks. And what do I mean by small cap? Well, it means that you're not going to find the likes of NVIDIA, Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, in this ETF. It's all companies with a market cap that is below $2 billion. Over the past five years, you can see how the small cap stocks have gotten left behind as the IWM generated 45% returns over that period compared to the S&P 500 doubling that and the RSP, which is the equal weight S&P 500, climbing nearly 75% over that five-year period. Again, IWM only invests in small cap stocks and it currently has assets under management 
of $66 billion. Over the past 12 months, the ETF is up 10%, with much of those gains coming in the past few months alone. So why is this risky, you might ask? Some economists out there believe that we will fall into a recession here in 2024. We've already started to see some signs of slowing economic growth. We've seen a slight uptick in unemployment rates and new reports of layoffs starting to come in towards the end of the year and the beginning of 2024. So we're going to have to watch that data closely because if we do, in fact, fall into a recession, small caps are a sector that usually gets hit quite hard. So definitely something that if you do own IWM, you need to be watching closely with how the economy is doing as a whole. And we're about to enter the Q4 earnings season, which will get some 2024 updated guidance from management teams. So we'll be watching closely on are they predicting higher growth or lower growth during the year. I do not currently own shares of IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, but I'm looking to add this. This is high on my watch list, but I do have some concerns here at the start of the new year. So one way for me to try and enter into a position is by selling a cash secured put. I discussed this recently in Cashflow University, today's video sponsor. By selling a cash secured put, I collected premium for the potential to actually buy this ETF at a much lower price. So again, if you're interested in options and a way to generate income, thousands each and every month potentially, depending on the account size, then you can join Cashflow University 25% off that first month using the promo code CFU25, link down in the description below. That leads us to stock number nine, which is Celsius Holdings, stock ticker CELH. This is not a company that I've actually covered on this channel before, and the reason being is I cover a lot more dividend stocks, but doesn't mean I turn a blind eye to growth stocks. After all, the largest individual stock holding in my portfolio is Alphabet, a non-dividend paying stock. When it comes to Celsius, I first learned about the product a few years back. I saw a friend holding a can of Celsius energy drink and thought it was just a cool new adult seltzer. But after understanding more about it, using the product on my own, don't tell my wife, I actually enjoyed it and realizing it is a healthier version or healthier energy drink that's out there with lower sugar and a lot less of the other stuff that goes into things like monsters. Celsius has had a great run, up nearly 70% over the past 12 months, and the stock is currently trading with a market cap of $12.8 billion. So a perfect company for those looking for that mid to small large cap stock. However, the stock is down nearly 20% from its September 2023 highs when it touched $69 per share. So as I explained, Celsius is a beverage company competing with the likes of Monster, who has a big market share in the energy drink field. So when you have any of these new energy drinks that come in, there's been a lot that have come in and gone. Celsius has no demand problem. Customers love the product. The problem with Celsius right now is the fact that pretty much 100% of their business is strictly here in the US. Here in Q1 2024, they're starting to expand internationally, beginning with Canada. Right now, Monster earns about 40% of their revenues internationally. So as an investor, the expansion plans has me excited for the growth trajectory. And usually when you're a new company and you are looking for ways to expand, there could be some growing pains there. But I think it's going to be a little bit smoother than a lot think when it comes to Celsius, given that they have a big backer in PepsiCo. Pepsi invested a huge amount of money in the company, and they've also signed a long-term agreement, which is centered around distribution. If all goes according to plan, the company has some huge growth ahead of it. And analysts agree as they expect EPS growth of 30% and 38% each of the next two years, respectively. In 2024, the average EPS is expected to be at 98 cents per share, which equates to a forward price to earnings multiple of 57.7 times. So it's very pricey stock nonetheless. But analysts are also high on the stock as they rate it a strong buy with an average 12-month price target of $71.52 per share, implying more than 25% upside from current levels. The lowest price target is well above today's levels. So no going in, it's a high multiple. There could be a lot of volatility in it, but there's a big growth story. And if it comes to fruition, I think investors are going to be richly rewarded. That leads us to the 10th stock on our list. We've gone through all nine so far, and now here we are to our last, but certainly not least, but probably our highest risk, highest reward type of play. And it's actually not a stock. It's going to be another ETF. We're taking a look at the Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF, or KWeb. This ETF only invests in Chinese-related technology companies. So this is a way to gain exposure 
to that China market that has struggled so mightily over the past few years and really hasn't recovered since the pandemic. For the past few years, I've had zero exposure to the China region, and rightfully so, as they have struggled mightily since the pandemic. However, we have started to see some inkling of a bottoming in the economy. Again, this is the second largest economy in the world today. So if you can get around and, and try and somewhat time the bottom, there could be a lot of growth packed in. So there's certain names that I'm looking at, like Alibaba or JD.com or Tencent out there, just to name a few. Baidu are the kind of the big and most popular four that's out there. All of those companies are held here within the K-Web. So instead of picking one and getting single stock risk, why not group them together and see if that economy truly comes to fruition and we do get the growth back? K-Web's going to do just fine. One of the things that I don't like about K-Web is their 0.69% expense ratio. I usually kind of cap those out at 0.5%. Again, this is the fee that you are paying for this ETF, for the managers, the portfolio managers. Looking here at the chart, you can see that the K-Web is down 25% over the past 12 months and currently has $5.3 in assets under management. And on that screen, you can kind of see that high expense ratio of 0.69%. Looking here, you can see the top 10 positions when it comes to the K-Web. Alibaba is the largest position with a 9.5% exposure rate, followed by Tencent. Then PDD, which owns the popular platform Timu. Other notable positions include JD.com and Baidu. The top 10 positions account for 60% of the ETF, and there are only 34 positions in all. As I mentioned, Alibaba is one of the primary reasons I'm looking at K-Web. I could have easily put Alibaba on this list right here, but instead I said, why not group the entire Chinese technology market together with KWeb? But in terms of Alibaba, this is how high analysts are on that stock. They have a strong buy rating with an average 12-month price target of $126 per share, implying nearly 70% upside. That is massive growth that we're talking about. So if you're looking to gain some exposure to some of those Chinese technology companies, definitely check out KWeb. So that there wraps up our video looking at 10 stocks I expect to outperform in 2024. It was a wide array of different types of stocks. We had growth stocks, dividend, dividend growth stocks, higher yield, as well as ETFs. Down in the comments section below, let me know which of these 10 stocks do you like best? And what are some names that may not be on this list, but you expect to outperform in 2024? Again, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you smash that like button down below as I truly appreciate it. It really helps with the growth of this channel moving forward, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.